This is Fashion Fridays. Every Friday, we present you with a fashion icon or topic. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Philip Plein. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel. How's luxury treating you today? Are you in for your daily dose of fashion today? Because we're kind of thinking that nothing says opulence better than a Philip Klein fashion show. As usual, we're here to bring some sparkle and inspiration into your life. So let's find out how this amazing designer rose to fame. Philip Klein is a fashion designer that started off with a low profile, firstly designing furniture and dog beds, and is now worth millions of dollars, with his brand being known all over the world. Coming from Germany, Philip Klein has quality engraved in his DNA and a great Swiss business model to follow from Lugano, Switzerland, the perfect place to start a business in the fashion industry. Being a true artist, Philip Klein has a different view on fashion and design that helped him to gain respect and popularity among his colleagues and clients over the years. His popularity taking off around the year 2014, and nowadays, the brand carrying his name has a special place in people's minds and no scandal or controversy can bring it down. They put up crazy shows, bold statements, and unique partnerships all in favor of fashion and product. What they sell is attitude and extravaganza, and it works. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Fashion lovers, entrepreneurs, billionaires, enthusiasts, and celebrity hunters alike, let's see what this fashion designer has to offer and what brought him to fame with the 15 things you didn't know about Philip Pline. Number 1. He started out with luxury dog beds and interior design. Philip Klein didn't always dream of being a fashion designer. He started off studying law in college, but got bored easily and went on to get involved in all sorts of side jobs and projects. His designing skills developed when he started designing luxury dog beds and lounges for Moet. He saw the opportunity for these kinds of products and made use of it, since almost all pet owners would do anything for their beloved fluffy friends. He learned fast that this goes as deep as buying the most crazy expensive accessories, beds, harnesses, or clothes, and decided that he wants to make as much money as he can off of it. Later on, he moved into designing a lounge for Moet and then shifted to leather travel bags and a German army jacket embossed with crystals. He says the jackets weren't for sale, but people kept asking for them. And this is how the journey began. Number 2. His strategy combines opulence and luxury. As a designer and a company, positioning is key. Nobody wants to see copycats and similar designs over and over again. Innovation and creativity are the things that set you apart from the crowd, and Philip Plein has a strong dose of creative qualities. Most of his items, clothes and accessories, are made out of diamonds, precious metals, and luxury materials. He's so into opulence that in February 2018 during the Milan Fashion Week, their show ended with a robot walking down the runway, a thing no one else has ever done in the industry. Philip Pline's secret is to always add a crazy twist to his shows in order to keep things fresh and unique. A very successful strategy, we must say. Number 3. His brand now has three lines of products. One thing that Philip Klein is amazing at is understanding how rich people think and how they like to spend their money. Give them uniqueness wrapped in luxury and they will buy your product. This is what his business's strategy was aimed at ever since the beginning. Gaining a lot of popularity, his brand now has three lines of products aimed at different markets. Philip Klein, Klein Sport, and Billionaire Couture. The fashion icon decided to design under three different brands in order to reach as many people as possible and gain as much authority on the market. He describes his work as a dedication to the extraordinary, a devotion to beauty, and a passion for rock and roll. Number 4. His crazy and outstanding lifestyle is in the brand's image. If you take a look at the Philip Klein social media accounts, you'll see a young-looking man living a fabulous life filled with luxury items and time spent with other celebrities. His hard work has paid off over time, and he's not afraid to show its impact on his life. Like most designers, opulence and outrageous things surround him everywhere from his house, food, car, and travels. Just like his fashion shows, his life is portrayed as a billionaire's playboy, constantly showing off his exciting adventures. Some people even criticize him for bragging and promoting kitsch, models, and excessiveness. But this kind of gossip and bad reputation has only helped his business, as Pline seems to enjoy living in luxury as much as he loves designing it. 
Number 5. Philip Pline is worth an impressive $180 million With business going better than ever, it comes as no surprise that Philip Pline's net worth reached $180 million over the years. In 2016, business magazine Bilanz listed Philip Pline as one of the richest people living in Switzerland in their annual Top 300 Richest, which is an impressive fact given the competition he's facing with big brands like Dior, Balmain, or Chanel taking the lead in the fashion industry. But with his brand expanding faster than any other in the fashion industry, Philip estimates that his business turns over $360 million a year. Just goes to show once again, the high-end products industry has more room at the top for people who want to join in, as long as they bring something fresh to the table. Number 6. He's currently fighting with his ex over the custody of their son. Back in 2013, the designer had a turbulent relationship with the Brazilian model Fernanda Rigon, with whom he had a son, Romeo Prince. The two ended their relationship harshly, and to this day, they keep shaming each other on social media and the interviews over the custody of the boy and other parenting issues. It seems like the designer's extravagant life and cheating allegations got in their way. Being such a huge name with all celebrities, it's no wonder he's been photographed by the media with all sorts of women, especially since Philip Pline never backs off on showing how much of an amazing life he's living. Back in 2011, paparazzi spotted him and Lindsay Lohan together numerous times, and dating rumors appeared even if the two were actually collaborating for the brand. Might we suggest Philip dating some non-famous women for a change? Number 7. He called out the Lugano authorities for being treated like a criminal Lugano is well known as the Silicon Valley of fashion, and they try to attract all sorts of big brands and companies there. Philip Pline is one of them, and has created jobs for the people living there and brought new investors to the area. Recently, the famous designer denounced the Lugano mayor publicly on his Instagram account after he and his team were treated as criminals during a small police routine. He expected a different treatment from authorities, and when that failed, he went viral on social media, pointing fingers and looking for justice. The mayor denied the allegations, but the scandal is still going strong in Ticino between these two. Number 8. He is at war with other big brands Inspiration can be a pain in the back if it all fails to come when you need it the most. In the fashion industry, trends go publicly twice a year and designers must adapt every season and come out with new ideas and designs. Sometimes they bring back older trends or collections, and some of them even go further to an extent of copying other designers. Since outgrowing your competition is the key, Philip Pline went straight to war with the big dogs in the hopes of getting a bigger piece of the pie. His sports line recently started a new campaign with fighting legend Floyd Mayweather under the name Be a Tiger, Not a Puma. The press quickly picked up the subtle reference to the sports company and started asking questions about it, but Philip Pline didn't give any further information. Nicely played, we must say. Number 9. In China, people can't spell the brand's name properly. Philip Pline extended his business worldwide in less than 20 years. With stores in major cities like New York, Milan, or Moscow, he manages to be where the movement is and take full advantage of the market. This strategy clearly works for him very well. However, being from Germany, his name is quite difficult to pronounce at first, and it's even harder in some countries from Asia, like China, where a lot of American and European names are impossible to pronounce. Chinese people often call Philip Pline simply PP, since PH and the letter P in both words is hard for them to say. But this doesn't stop them from buying the expensive clothes he designs, so no harm done. Number 10. He conquered Can with his Jungle Duwa mansion. Have we mentioned the crazy opulent life this designer is living? Nothing is too much for him, and it comes as no surprise that even his houses are extravagant. He owns a pied de terre in New York, another one in Lugano, Switzerland, a $100 million under construction mansion in Beverly Hills, and this Jungle Duwa, King's Jungle, 11 bedroom villa he built in Cannes, France. In 2017, the designer held an international resort show at his villa and set up an amazing performance for his 250 guests, including press and some of his most valued customers from around the world. All of the sources and photos taken at the event pointed at the designer's jaw-dropping estate and once again his extravagant ideas. Nicely done, Philip! Want to go behind the scenes on another amazing innovative fashion designer? Make sure to watch our video 15 Things You Didn't Know About Marc Jacobs to let us know which one of the two you like best. Number 11. He claims to have no debt or loans. And we'll quote him on this. 
not even one dollar or loan. Millionaire Philip Klein has a very high-profile life, and he's not afraid to show it. Some even say that there's no way he makes that much money from only selling clothes and suspect him of shady business or tax evasion. He does spend and invest a lot of money in his brand and tries to constantly innovate, but claims to have a clean profile in spite of all the rumors. Since his business headquarters is based in Lugano, Switzerland, he might be clean or he just might be smarter than us. We can't say which one. But one thing is for sure, all the craziness they put up during fashion shows costs a lot of money and probably brings in even more. Number 12. Philip Pline's brand sponsored the Lugano's hockey team. Having the headquarters based in Lugano, Switzerland, along with other big brands, the company decided to support the local hockey team last year. This is quite a popular move for a lot of companies, since it offers them exposure and credit. The partnerships go under the name of Fashion Partner and agreed to redesign their full attire. The 12-year contract is settled with the Pline Sport Line and even extends to formal suits for the team and staff. Philip Pline is thrilled over the partnership with the company, even creating a special lounge at the stadium and redesigning the team's logo. Who knows, maybe he'll buy the club in the end and enter the sports world to spend some more money. Number 13. He has a side business in the steel industry. Most people that know Philip Pline point him toward fashion and media, which is 90% correct. His whole brand and designs belong to the fashion industry, but what very few people know is that he has a side business in the steel industry. Looking at his designs and inspiration for the fashion shows, it's no wonder he went for the cold metal industry, where a lot of moguls have made millions of dollars. His vision is very graphic, and his designs use a lot of dark colors, textures, and metals. The way this goes, he might fully enter a new business very soon and give it a good shake. Don't say we didn't warn you. Number 14. He collaborated with multiple celebrities for his shows and collections. Sitting front row at a Fashion Week presentation is a huge thing for anyone. Those seats are reserved for magazine editors, celebrities, and influencers. So where you sit at a fashion show dictates your level of importance and status in the fashion industry. On the flip side, who you have in your front row dictates how important of a designer you really are, just like in high school. At Philip Pline's fashion shows, you'll only see top celebrities attending and top models walking down the runway. They come to get inspired and see a great show every time. For social media reach and magazines, his shows are golden. They get to see celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Naomi Campbell, Madonna or Rita Ora. New trends and opulence all in the same place. Number 15. He has over 80 stores all over the world. As we mentioned before, the brand Philip Pline has stores all over the world, in some of the most important cities and shopping centers around. Selling only luxury items, he went straight for the big cities where rich people shop, like Monaco, Beverly Hills, Dubai, or Hong Kong. If you feel like throwing money on some extravagant clothes but have no Philip Pline store around you, don't worry, he has an online store as well. His strategy and advertising campaigns march strongly on the keywords luxury premium, and ultimate. This insight has helped him to get to where he is now. One interesting fact to be noted here is that some of his stores are actually privately owned, an extravagant thing only Philip Pline would be up to. We have to admit that in spite of the controversy and scandal that followed him all of these years, he managed to create a strong brand and a thriving business. But before we wrap things up, we're curious to know, Alexers, do you own anything designed by Philip Pline? Let us know in the comments. And as always, here's a bonus fact for sticking with us all the way to the end. Number 16. He hosted the craziest fashion show so far. For the Milan Fashion Week show AW16, he arranged for a fleet of monster trucks to drive on set over cars to dispatch a cargo of models on a mirrored, pitchy club set so clouded in dry ice and diesel fumes you could barely see the clothes. Rappers were singing, Paris Hilton was there raising people up at one of the craziest and most expensive fashion shows ever to be held. In the end, they destroyed over 80 cars and had motorcycles greet people. It was a total fiasco. But he later stated that he's not selling clothes, he's selling a dream. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.